Antarctica registers hottest temperatures on record? Because global warming is a myth. It cycles. Sh- sure. <laughs> I'm just fucking... <laughs> oh, You're like, oh, what? No, okay, well... <laughs> All right, so according to CNN World, the hottest temperature ever recorded in Antarctica was measured on Thursday at a remote station on the continent's north tip. Just the, the temperature, tip. Just the tip. The just the tip is heating up, baby. The temperature was nearly 65 degrees Celsius. Uh, uh, Fahrenheit, uh, 18.3 Celsius. <laughs> hold like, on a second. Yeah, I was whoa. like, hold on. My eyes jumped across the line there. So the temperature was nearly 65 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 18.3 Celsius. At Argentina's Esperanza Research Station. That surpassed the previous record of 63.5 set on March 24th, 2015. This so is, it's this, increasingly getting warmer. This is what they talk about. Global global, global average temperatures increasing only by a degree or whatever. That means elsewhere it's going up a couple degrees or even more than average, that. You're talking about average. a global average. And it reflects locally in much more drastic changes. They started recording on... Uh, Temperature records from Esperanza date back to 1961. Right. But this means so this, this means that the temperature at Esperanza was practically identical to what felt like what was felt Thursday afternoon in San Diego, California. It's crazy. Pers- All right. Now let's put it into perspective. Yeah. To be fair. To be fair. It is summer. So but it's not typical that the temperature in Antarctica, one of the coldest places on Earth, are nearly the same as those in Southern California ever. Even though that, yes, it is the summer, that's still not typical. It's crazy. We're seeing this happen all over the world, really. And it's... um, Yeah, it, it's heating up. Things are heating up. Things are heating up, especially for yeah. us losers and degenerates, you know? You never know. Losers and degens, right? The meek will inherit the earth. The meek. I hope you guys have fun with it. I hope you're meek. Yeah. I'm uh, not. That's uh, why I said I hope you guys have fun with it. So, you know, it's just one of those things. It's we're, we're doomed. A recent study found that warm ocean waters are melting the gigantic Waits Glacier in West Antarctica, which alone has the potential to raise global sea levels. Ready? One more time. Global sea levels more than 10 feet. Wow. Imagine that, Bodie. Wow. And the neighboring Pine Island Glacier has also shown sign increased instability in the last 25 years. Increased so, instability. Instability. Yes, yeah. sorry. Increased instability. In the last 25 years. There's a lot of people that will be flooded out and killed. And one of the things you don't really realize about sea level is that it's not... You'll, you'll see flat earthers say that, well, it's it's uniform. It's across the whole... How does water, water always find its level or whatever? But um, ocean... Uh, sea level, the the top of the sea level changes drastically based on the topography underneath the surface of the ocean. So in some places, it's going to rise much faster. There are shores where it rises faster than others. Even though you assume it's one big flat ocean or whatever, there's a topography that influences the height. Right. So with you're, your... you're increasing a little bit here can expand and expand. It, 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 it can be catastrophic. Right, because there are there are channels created right. underneath and the water that are directing it to, and the different temperatures. Oh yeah. What, what causes what's what displaces more water? Hot water or cold water? Cold water is more dense, right? So if you increase the water temperature, you're actually increasing the volume. Right. So it's it's not as so, simple as melting an ice cube. Wait a minute! And, and, You're telling me I can't make a YouTube video with a glass and nuts. melt an ice cube and show it didn't rise at all? It's like yeah, most of the ice isn't in the water, you assholes. Wait a minute! <sighs> Try melting an ice cube and then pouring it in the glass. You f- fuck nuts. Jerk face. God, I hate. But yeah, you know. Yeah. Simple science for simple people. Do you, want to, mm. do you want to talk about one of my most favorite things in the world and why I am so happy to be alive in this timeline? Hold on. It really depends on what one of your most favorite things in the world are. The, Voyage, the Voyager. The Voyager? I love the Voyagers. Oh, my God. NASA brings Voyager 2 
fully back online 11.5 billion miles from earth fully back online yeah, we, we thought i thought we lost it i thought we lost it they, they finally entered interstellar space this is the first time a man-made object capable of communicating with us has entered interstellar space we can actually study the space in between stars that's fucking mind-blowing if you really think about it like everything we've known this to has date, never been done everything everything we know to date is based on uh it, the the, sol, uh, the solar system a localized right, right. a localized view of the universe we finally broke that barrier i think uh last year i think voyage or maybe a couple of years ago voyager one and then voyager two um they're on slightly different trajectories but um yeah so they they basically fixed one of the most well they call it the most intrepid explorers in human history um it's back online so on Wednesday, February 5th at 10 p.m. Eastern, NASA gave out the good news that Voyager 2 is not only stable, but it's back at its critical science mission. So sh shit's rolling, huh? And what's crazy is these things have been in space for 40 years, four decades. This is 40-year-old technology, and it's working 11.5 right. billion. But, like, imagine well, imagine what's... Way before that iPhone right. was even ever thought of, they this shit this... has been up in... Yeah. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, mission operators report that Voyager 2 continues to be stable. Blah, blah, blah. Spacecraft resumed taking science data, and the science teams are now evaluating the health. So... This is this is crazy. It takes 17 hours, one way, to communicate with Voyager 2 from Earth. So that means a single information relay, just a simple, <laughs> takes 34 hours. That's how far away it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, why don't you go ahead and kick kick back your feet? We're going to be here a while waiting on the text back. That's amazing. <laughs> That's absolutely amazing. I love it. I love it. It's the craziest thing humans have done, I really think. Because it's just, that, no, that, that's our furthest thing. That's beyond humanity. Right. I mean, really, we are doing things beyond humanity now. Not we, because we're fucking subpar. But there's there are people out there, yeah, yeah. doing things with our dollars. Good job, NASA. Good job, NASA. Thank you for being fake. Thank you for Thank making you. this all up because I Oh my it. god. Thank you for the video of the moon landing that you guys shot in Hollywood. Tax dollars well worth it. Beautiful. Uh, so as of this writing, NASA hasn't confirmed or denied whether that is Oh, hold on. The likeliest problem was that the spacecraft was using up too much of its available power supply which triggered protection software. The software automatically turned off Voyager space instruments instruments when there's a power overload to save on power. It only has a finite supply after all. Mm. As of this writing, yeah. NASA hasn't confirmed or denied whether that is actually what happened. Only time will tell, but for now we can rest assured that Voyager 2's mission is far from over yet. If all goes well, it should have another five years of life left, meaning five more years of data from an entire area of space we humans have no other way of studying hmm. it's taken 40 fucking years to get to this point we're not gonna get that this is we'd have to have start you know like started forever ago no 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 but that you see you're still limiting yourself on the old model though uh newer engines and propulsion is I mean, this yeah. is the future. We are in a technological revolution. So to say, you know, it's taken Voyager 2 45 years to get here. The next engine's out. It may take him 10 years to, to get to where it took him 45. You know what I mean? Yeah, it might. Yeah. So, so you know, limiting yourself with inside that perspective of, oh, wow, we'll never do this. Or but it'll take another 40 years. It also, yeah, it, it also costs billions of dollars. Oh, don't worry. So, we got tons of it. Yeah. Sure. Check the U.S. bank account. Right. We got tons of money. Trillions in debt. Yeah, but yeah, um, but yeah, this is great. I'm glad. I'm so no, happy. No, that is. Yeah, because that that again, yeah, it's like I said. That's one thing that I think is really cool as well. Yep. Is the space stuff? It's so far beyond human. That's crazy. That far out there, you know, right. there is so much that humans are oblivious to, right. and especially the subpar ones. Right. What a this de de degenerate little satellite, right? Breaking barriers. It's it's hmm. inspiring for all of us. All you have to do is be a hunk of metal. Just be a robot. Just be a robot. Whatever.
Uh, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Uh, good, good. Okay. The age old question. Does putting the lid down when flushing the toilet really make a difference? Let's research find out. has found that. Yeah, let's find out with Stubbar News. Research has found that flushing the toilet with the lid down could reduce airborne particles by as much as fifty percent. Wow, fifty oh, percent less poop in the air by putting the lid down. In addition to the visible drops of water that are generated upon flushing the toilet, smaller droplets that are just micrometers in diameter also form and are propelled into the surrounding air. Doesn't that sound like a worse thing? Uh, you don't want them to be smaller. Right, because then you can breathe that in, get in your eye. You get pink eye from flushing the toilet, you right. know, not from eating ass. Uh, the aerosolized droplets could contain fecal bacteria such as E. coli... Blah, blah, blah. The research found that putting the toilet lid down reduced the number of both visible and smaller droplets during and after flushing by 30 to 60%. However, use of the lid increased the diameter and concentration of the bacteria in these droplets. Oh, it prevented them from getting super small. Right, but it also it also kept right. it more concentrated. Right, concentrated poo drops. It was also found that the... Uh, airborne micro droplets were detected for 16 minutes after flushing the toilet with the lid down, 11 minutes longer than when the toilet was flushed with the lid up. Basically, mm. basically what, what this tells me is that um, you're stuck with poop. Poop's going to be everywhere. You know, 30 to 60 percent, mm -hmm. which means best case scenario, it's 40 percent, you know, poo everywhere. Right. Like, is that really an improvement? What kind of life do you want to live in? What kind of world? I'd embrace the full poo. <laughs> you'd embrace the <laughs> you'd embrace the full poo. Why not? I mean, what if uh, if how is forty percent any better? You're still surround. You're still caked in shit. Now consider this: composting toilets don't make poo droplets. Oh yeah, they just burn it, right? No, they compost it. Oh, well, there's still got to be some off gassing and all that stuff. Like, there's no way you're gonna eliminate. The aerosol, like if you fart, you're aerosoling poop in the air. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's true. And even people that say, oh, I put my uh, toothbrush in the uh, cabinet and close the thing. And it's like, there's cracks everywhere. Air gets everywhere. These, these, these molecules are tiny, tiny, tiny. So your, your, oh, yeah. your effort to de poopify your bathroom or even your house, forget about it. Je okay. The moment, all right, let's say you've taken all the precautions. You, you've got your toothbrush tucked away in the cabinet in airtight container the minute you open that motherfucker in your bathroom right done there's poop right i mean you you, you poop in a confined hole in your house you, yeah you're gonna get shit everywhere mm -hmm. so i mean yeah reduce it is great but you know just 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 practice safe food practices and keep doing what you're doing and you'll be fine don't worry about the poo there's going to be poo one way or another, right? Right. But you can reduce it, is what they're saying. You can you can reduce it, but it also changes it a little bit. It makes it smaller, and it stays in the air longer. So if you want to wait the extra five minutes before entering your bathroom, but then there's still shit everywhere. Like, mm. once once it's on the surface, it grows. Maybe you need an industrial fan in your bathroom. Maybe. But will that even you know, work? Will that just create another culture? Uh, it, I'd rather send it outside, though. Will it make it outside? I mean, someone's going to get trapped. Oh, yeah. You Inside know? the vacuum. Unless you do. It's really hard to have 100% particle absorb. Like, even clean rooms don't yeah. have that. No. So this. And that's how we get mon monkey fish frogs. Right. And plus, as soon as you go outside or go in any public bathroom where there isn't even a lid on the toilet, you're covered in shit. <laughs> just face it just just face the feces it's it is what it is yeah you can never escape yeah. the poop now thinking of that imagine going to every restaurant every <laughs> everywhere there is shit on your food there is shit there's shit everywhere everywhere there's no es there's life no is escape. shitty man there's no escaping you it can you can't escape the shit life is shitty this is subpar news uh, this is subpar <laughs> Now, there, there's a talk on this. A healthcare infection society-funded PhD student 
uh, will present the findings on this during his uh, poster presentation, real-time monitoring of aerosols generated from toilet flushing. The news you need to know. The news you need to know. It's it's the subpar caps available on Bodhi Agora's viral style. Link below. And subpar ad, bro. Sub nice. Look at the dank. See, I like I like the beanie. That's embroidered too, right? Yeah, that's a fucking Yeah, that's that's diddy. that's not print on shit. This is real. Yeah. You are legit subpar with like this this merch is like Oh, what do you do? Oh, you spanking that booty? Watch Spank me whip, out. whip. Watch me nay nay. Ah, how did I not get the reference? I don't know. Probably because it's not the right whipping. Oh, let me see the whipping again. I was just fucking. Yeah, it's like that whip. whip. I don't. I don't know how they do it. Show, show me how they're supposed to do it in the real way. I don't. Let, let's see this. I don't no, know. No, no, no. I, we need to see this. No. Uh, everyone out there, you agree, right? We need to see Bodhi do the whip and nene. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just edit all this out. Don't judge me. Who the fuck are you? 